It's a little, it's very grainy, but also the, the, the tone is totally different. I don't know if it's gonna crash from here. I think it's gonna do something really weird. In my work as a video editor, color correction is often an important part of the process. And by color correction, a lot of people in the industry divide that up into two different phases. The first part is where you take raw footage from the camera and you try and correct those colors to be what you expect. And then the second step is more of the creative step where you put your creativity into it and you try and get a certain look or feel. And one of the ways that industry personnel do this color correcting step is they hold a color corrector chart in front of the camera. Simply having an actor hold a chart like this in front of the camera, then later on when you're editing the video and doing the color correction, you can look at this chart in the footage and then you can see what adjustments need to be made in order to get the colors quote unquote correct. Like if the blue isn't blue enough, they'll crank up the blues or if the yellow has shifted red, they'll try and shift it back. The great part about that is that in 2023, we have automated tools that will look at this color corrector chart and then correct the colors for you. It's nice. This is where the shirt comes into play. I was looking for cool video editor t-shirts and then I came across this shirt with the color corrector chart on it. And I'm like, oh, this has got adventure written all over it, right? I'm quite ready for another adventure. As soon as I saw this shirt, I knew exactly what I needed to do. I was gonna buy the shirt, wear it, and then see if I could force Adobe Premiere to try and color correct based on the shirt. The color reproduction on this t-shirt is terrible. Like these three blues in the diagonal there, they're supposed to be different colors, but they all kind of look like the exact same blue. These color corrector charts are generally not cheap. They have some special process that goes into making sure the pigments are like exactly correct. And you're always supposed to hold it by the sides just so you don't accidentally get your fingers on the pigments. They're that sensitive. The actors that are holding the thing or they're always gonna have like Cheetos fingers or something from the crafts table. They, you don't wanna get their oil from the skin on this, right? So as much as I knew that I needed to try this, I had just as many doubts about whether this idea would work at all. Is this experiment even worth trying? If you hit a button, it will try and find the color corrector chart in the frame itself. And there are times when I've had the actual real color corrector chart in frame and it couldn't find it. I don't know if it's gonna be able to look at this and actually recognize it as a color corrector chart. And like a weird, you know, wrinkles and not exactly flat and like kind of like wavy 3D, right? I do not have high hope but then even if it does find it it may just be like so off that it's unusable as a color corrector chart i ran the idea past some filmmaking friends and let's just say they were a bit skeptical about this whole idea yeah that's not gonna work i don't know if it's gonna crash from here i think it's gonna do something really weird and i think especially with all the black specks or dark specks within the colors it's gonna have a weird effect. I have a feeling what's gonna happen is once you do it, the color might just look utterly hideous and the idea might be cooler than what actually happens or it's gonna give you some crazy new color scheme grade that's gonna be kind of badass. Well, I don't, I don't want to like damn the printer or anything, but it's probably maybe a file type that was sent over that's wrong because these, these, there's just no variation like you Dumb can tell. File types. Here, it's a little, it's very grainy, but also the, mm. the, the tone is totally different. I mean, maybe I'm colorblind. Look at that. That looks different. Oh, do you think I should give it a shot? You should totally give it a shot. Let's find out together. We're gonna take this footage right here. I'm gonna stretch out my t-shirt, try and get rid of the booby curves. Here we go, we've got some of the wrinkles out now. Go, go, gadget, color corrector. All right, we have taken the footage into Adobe Premiere. This is the plugin for Adobe Premiere. It's actually a third-party plugin called MBR Color Corrector. I think MBR is the initials of the guy who made it. MBR, my femical romance. I don't know. Now we're gonna tell the plugin to find the color corrector chart in frame. Let's see if it works. Let's hit the button. 
Oh my god, it did find the color corrector chart in frame. The four edges of the color corrector chart actually line up and match what's on the t-shirt. So obviously the colors are different. You can see that, you know, it's not perfect match color wise, but the colors are in the right spot. That's mind blowing right there that that even worked. Let's go. All right, we're halfway through the video. I'm gonna take a break from recording. I'm gonna take this footage into Adobe Premiere and we're gonna see what happens. Then I'll record the rest of the second half of the video right after. So now to actually apply the results of the color corrector, big reveal. Oh my God. Okay. Well, like it definitely worked and like it's yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, not, not like the worst results in the world somehow. Like I think I was just imagining it to be like awful, 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 but it's almost just like, okay, somebody used the wrong settings on the camera and the color might just look utterly hideous and the idea might be cooler than what actually happens. Obviously this wouldn't be like usable in, you know, if, if I deliver this to a client, they'd be like, oh yeah, okay, by the way, you're fired. I guess one of the lessons we learned today is that color correction can be a very flexible process. You could use the color corrector chart in very poorly lit conditions, like maybe on the street under a sodium vapor lamp, right? One of those very orange where everything looks kind of yellow, right? You're not gonna get very good color reproduction out at all, but you could use the color corrector chart to try and push the colors in the right direction. Maybe the, maybe the lesson is that it's good to take some risks and push technology beyond what it was made for, right? You're always gonna learn something in the process. I think I wanna move from using the color corrector chart sometimes to using the color corrector chart always. I think it's just a good thing to have filmed, right? You don't always have to use it, but just given how flexible the whole process is, I think it's something that's really worth doing at all times. And it's just something you can put in your camera bag anyway. Thank you for coming along on this ride with me. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you disliked it, give it a thumbs down. That way I know what kind of videos to make in the future. Also, I am super excited that the Patreon is like hovering around $100 a month right now. That is so mind-blowingly exciting and I am so thankful to all the Patreons. There is never an expectation that anyone contribute to the Patreon, but every person that is, I am so grateful. It really warms my heart and it just helps me dedicate more and more time to this kind of thing. Thank you so much and join me next time. Ciao B. Oh, that's pretty good. So, that's pretty good. Yeah, it's a lot less vibrant on this shirt than this. Weird. I would be interested to... I think uh, I'm not vibrant. No, I think you're very vibrant.